attitude. Right. My ministry is not going to be successful, or at least it's not going to be su as successful as it could be because I've already differentiated out that I am here and you are there. I am better. You are inferior. Therefore, I may not even feel that you are worthy of this gospel message that God has commissioned me to preach. Amen. Amen, lights. Amen. So look, look at verse 9. Now, you know, you know this very well. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Hmm. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. Now, this, this probably does not happen for us in this day and age in such a, a, a overt way. Right. It's probably a bit more covert, and if we really spend some time, you know, flushing out uh, biases and, 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 and cultural competence, competencies and all of those different things, we would probably be able to uncover and discover a bit more readily some true biases that we have about people. Yeah. Now, just on the surface, we're blind to it. It's just like, uh, I forgot Dr. Dr. Uh, uh, Sinye, he said a fish would be the last thing to discover water. <laughs> because it's so immersed in it. That, that you, you're, you're so immersed in what you know and what you're surrounded by that you don't even put much credence in it because it's just how it is. So that's how it is with, with various levels of bias as well. It's so ingrained in us. It's so much a part of us that we don't, we don't even factor it in as there being something that we should check about it or something that might be wrong with it. And this is what was going on within the body of Christ from an early church perspective. Uh, the Jewish Christians were looking at all of the Gentile Christians as if, no, well, our thought process about you is right because we've always been superior in the eyesight of God. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Verse 10, two men, two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men. Again, as we talked about this morning. Mm -hmm. Judging value based upon what's... Oh my goodness. Now, so, yeah, I can, I can feel like I'm all of that, but I might be standing next to something where what I'm using to assess who I am well. is just nothing even remotely close to what I should be factoring in anyway. Right. Now, we, we, we look at this, and so here, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this public. Now, like I said, this probably does not happen overtly with us. But if we, if we probably dig just a little bit below the surface, mm -hmm. we might find that we have some of these elements that oftentimes stream between us. And we, we kind of, especially in this nation, we have, we have a, 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 a sick fetish or fantasy around the fall of people. Yep. That when we see people fall, we, we, we have a smile on our face yep. as we have that conversation because it was not us yes. that fell. So now we feel like, oh, see, whew, I'm still strong because he fell, she fell. But look, I'm still standing. That's the wrong attitude. Amen. That's the wrong mindset. But it might be a bit more covert than it is over. Uh, he says again in verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, uh, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, uh, as extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Now he goes into bragging. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess, and, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So it's all about the mindset that we have also when we look at other people, that we need to make sure that we understand that we are, are highly valued as, as God's property, but through that lens, we also need to make sure, especially through the concept of lifestyle evangelism and the ministry imperative, that there is no group of 
people that when we look at them, we can say, hmm, I'm glad I'm here. Look at them. That's just an absolute shame. Yeah. Remember, mercy is for the afflicted. Yeah. So if there is no one afflicted, no need to cry out for mercy. But last time I checked, all of us stand in need of God's Amen. Amen. In conclusion, 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. The, mind, the, the, the mindset is very important. The lens is very important in terms of how, not just how we see ourselves. We've spent a lot of time talking about that. But it's also important that we spend time understanding how we see others. How we see others. Amen. Man, we can spend a lot of time in that area. Because some people feel good about who they are in judgment of where others are not. Right. But someone not being where I am does nothing to justify where I am. Right. Verse, verse 9, verse 9, and then we'll close. For it, it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not Muzzle the mouth of the ox. First Corinthians chapter 9. For it is written, that, written in the law, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written that, that he that plows should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of, of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Well. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather, nevertheless, we are not we, are not we rather, nevertheless, we have not used this power. But suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers of the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it, it were better for me to die than any man should make my glory void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of for necessity. It is laid upon me, yea, woe. Woe, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, mm -hmm. for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily that I, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, we're going somewhere, but though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all men that I might gain the more. So we, we read all of that to simply get to where we're, we're, we're moving towards. But again, the Apostle Paul is saying, look, I'm free from everyone, but I have to govern myself in a certain way that I have the right lens about those in which I am engaged with and those in which I am coming in contact with. And the Jew, and he's looking for verse 20, and unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. That I might gain the Jews. Now, he could have said, you know what, yeah, I used to be down with that. I persecuted Christians because I thought the Jewish way was the way. So he could have said, you know what, I want nothing to do with Jewish people. Right? But instead of doing that, he says, no, for the cause of the gospel of Christ, whatever I need to do to become in agreement with them, not in terms of selling out my soul, but whatever I need to do to show myself hospitable, open, and welcoming to them, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to sit in judgment of them. Amen. Y'all looking tired. Let me hurry up. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law. As under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Now, when we're out there from an evangelistic perspective, we're going to come in contact with some people that are under law. Right. All kinds of laws. Yeah. Drug addicted laws, yeah. sexual laws, yeah. alcoholic laws, yeah. prof profanity law. You name it, there are going to be people that we will find that are operating under the law of the prince and the power of the air. Paul is saying, look, I'm not going to engage in what they're 
they're doing, but I'm also not going to judge them in such a way that when I come to them, they won't hear what I have to say. He says, I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law. Be not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. He says, to the weak. You, 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 through the concept of it, you come across some weak people. Yeah. Right? But again, we always have to remember what Paul said in regards to such were some of you. That's why we spent that time talking about one of the things we have to do is come to grips with our past because as we are in that process of lifestyle evangelism and the ministry imperative, we have to keep in mind, well, I need not judge that because it wasn't too long ago where that was me. Amen. 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 So he said to the weak, anybody in here ever been weak? He says, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. He says, I am made all things, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now, here's, here's, here's what got me, because we like to, and I'm done, we like to categorize people. Especially as we feel like we've moved up. I'm, I'm no longer, I don't do that anymore, so now I look down on everyone who does. And that's the exact opposite of what it means to, to, to extend mercy. Mercy acknowledges this could be anyone. More importantly, mercy acknowledges this could be me. On a good day, mercy acknowledges that was. So in other words, now let's exist in partnership because I know where you are and the reason why I know where you are is because that's where I used to be. But I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to tell you that that's where I used to be in judgment. I'm going to tell you that's where I used to be in partnership and fellowship so that we can start walking along so I can bring you closer to Christ. But if I only sit in judgment of those who do now what I used to do yesteryear, what good am I in the kingdom? What good, what good am I if I know good and well I too used to be an alcoholic or I too used to struggle with drugs but now when I go down to the tenderloin or skin roll or whatever they want to call it and then I see people in a similar condition I don't even want to talk to them. Somebody spoke to me. Somebody spoke to me when I was in that state so why would now I be in a situation where I don't even address it? So when I'm, when I'm out and about this is how I see it. When I see the brother on the block Come on, man. doing whatever he's doing, my, my response is, that's me. That's me. When I see the person that's doing that which is right for Christ, that's me. When I see the president, not right now. That's me. And I'm not talking about racial. No. I'm just talking about all of these different phases of life. Because if I check out from any one of them, then how could I be effective in that arena? Amen. So yeah, I, I'm a child of God. I'm not the president, but I am like the president. In other words, if we had to have a conversation, we could have a conversation. And then turn around that evening and teach a and teach a university class to some doctoral level students. Amen. Amen. We 